So this is the new Mole 3D Scanner from 3D Maker Pro. And this is a pretty nice handheld 3D scanner, which can also be used with a turntable, so you can use this as a desktop scanner. And all of this came in this really nice hard case. And with that being said, this is a pre-production unit that was sent to me free of charge. So if you do happen to get one of these, it might be slightly different from this unit. But anyways, this is the actual scanning unit, and it can be used just like this in your hand, or you can attach it to a tripod. And this is all going to depend on what package you get of the scanner, seeing that the standard mole just comes with the scanner and the power supply. And what I am using in this video is the premium version. So basically it comes with a tripod and turntable. So I'm going to get this set up real quick on my laptop and do my first scan, which is going to be this little reflector from my Mazda MX-3. But if we go over to the screen of the computer, you can see that it's not really picking it up. And it's because this is too shiny, which really isn't too much of a problem as long as you have something like this. This is a 3D scanning spray. This works like a spray paint almost, but it's temporary and goes away in about five hours. But it also leaves a matte finish on the entire part, so it's really easy to scan. And the scanner has no problem picking up this part now. Unfortunately, this spray is not the cheapest, seeing that one can will run you about $30. But if you want to save some money and you're able to actually clean your part off with water, you can use this foot spray because it is a powder that sprays out. Out. And this will get the job done. It's definitely not as good and doesn't cover as well, but you can make it work. But anyways, first scan came out pretty good. You can also see that it scanned the turntable itself, but it's also in pink. That means that area is selected, and if I just push delete, it will all go away. And I do need to scan this a few more times in different orientations so I can get every single angle. And this is what it looks like scanning in real time. And you can see that it's not scanning the whole thing because it's a little too close to the scanner, and we're going to have to stitch all of these different scans together to make one mesh. And then with each one of these scans, I'm going to have to manually align them just because this thing is too symmetrical for it to figure it out on its own with the auto aligning, at least from what I've tried so far. And doing this is pretty straightforward. You just place these markers in the same spots on both of the scans and it'll put it together. And after a ton of different scans and aligning everything, here's everything all put together. But all of these different colors that you see here are just point clouds. So I did process all of this and turned it into this full 3D model, which came out looking pretty good. And you can even kind of see the writing on the lens. So I'm going to take this file now and 3D print it. And this took a little under two hours to print. And with all of the supports removed, it's almost an exact copy. Granted, it's no longer a working reflector or light. And one thing you might have noticed is it doesn't have the holes all the way through. And this is pretty normal for 3D scanners like this. They just can't see that deep into the part normally and pick up the holes. And if we take some measurements of the actual part and the printed part, they're actually really close. And with this being an actual printed part, it's going to be off from what the actual scanned part is too. And when it comes to test fitting it on the car itself, it fits perfectly. And I did drill out the holes, so I was able to mount this in place with the stock hardware. And this also happens to be the same part that fits on the first generation Miata. And this scanner does have an advertised accuracy of 0.05 millimeters and 0.1 millimeter resolution. But that doesn't mean you can scan objects that are that small. And to show this, I'm going to scan this skull ring. And you can see that the scanner is able to pick this ring up, but this is pretty much as close as I can get to it. And after doing just this one quick scan and processing it, you can see that there is a lot of details missing. So if you're thinking about using this to scan small objects with high details, it's not going to work. And the reason why it has some holes in it is because I only did one scan to show you the limitations when it comes to details. So the next thing I'm going to try to scan is this aftermarket car mirror. And you can see this is extremely shiny, so I sprayed it with some scanning spray. And to scan this part, I'm just using it in my hand, and it's picking up everything pretty well. And after scanning this a bunch of times and aligning everything like before, this is what I have. And after processing it without doing any type of repairs, it came out looking really nice. You can see some gaps in areas around the mirror and at the mounting point, but those are fixable and the mirror part needs to be removed to hollow this out anyways. And about eight hours later, I have the part all printed out. And I just need to remove the supports and see how it matches up with the original. And side by side, it looks pretty spot on. And this is the original one that I scanned in the car, and the 3D scanned and printed one fits exactly the same. And now that I have a pretty much perfect copy of this, I can use this 3D file to help me design something to cover this entire area and make this fit better. Overall, this is a pretty nice 3D scanner, and it's pretty easy to use. But it's definitely not perfect, especially if you're scanning something that doesn't have a bunch of details to it. You will need to add trackers, or this will get lost and mess up your entire scan. Also, the processing times after every scan really add up, especially if you're doing 
doing 10, 20 scans so you can build out your mesh as much as possible. And 3D scanning is still not at the point where you can just scan something really quick and have a perfect 3D model of it. There's always going to be things that you're going to need to clean up or fix. So if you have no 3D design experience or any type of experience with just dealing with 3D files, this might not be for you unless you know someone or pay someone to fix them for you. And I actually fall under that category. I am not great with actual 3D design work. So I'm going to be taking a course and finally learn how to do this instead of asking people that I know to help me out. And I'll have a link in the description to the course that I'm going to be taking if you want to check it out for yourself. And if you do use my link, you'll get $50 off of whatever course you pick and I will get $50 off of whatever course I want in the future. Well, that's about it for this video, so let me know in the comments what you think of this scanner, and check out my playlist about all the different 3D scanners I've used. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.